For USCfootball.com, I'm Keely Orr here with Dan Weber for its analysis of USC's introductory press conference of its new athletic director, Mike Bone. Now, when USC let out the press release last night, uh, they didn't really say who the athletic director was. We were waiting for uh, confirmation from Dr. Carol Folt, the president of the university, and she introduced Mike Bone. And Dan, I just want to get your overall thoughts first. I think the thing that stands out most about him is just his energy. He said, there's two things about me, my passion and my energy, and he doesn't really have an off switch, which you kind of got in his presser. He was very energetic energetic and he seemed very happy to be uh, in this new position. He definitely won the pe won the press conference. I mean there's no question about it. But he was even better afterwards in the one-on-one -on -one stuff. I mean he was just you can just tell I mean that he has a knack uh, you know about him and the more you talk to the people at the University of Cincinnati the more they tell you how much they really like what he's been doing. Uh, he did a wonderful job overseeing, for example, um, the uh, Nippert Stadium is actually uh, uh, like a 1915 stadium, so one of the five oldest in the country. They renovated it, did an unbelievable job, and he oversaw that. And then they uh, renovated their basketball arena. So he's done some, so, done some really good things, and he picked the right football coach. I mean, if he picked the right football coach uh, and Luke Fickle from Ohio State, uh, that gets, that's a big start on, uh, on things. But uh, he, uh, he's just really, really good at what he does. He's so different, first of all, 26 years, and you've had nothing but three former uh, USC football stars who didn't ever do any uh, serious athletic administration of any kind. And here you got a guy his whole life has been uh, athletic administration. And I think what you can tell is uh, he kind of came from nowhere in the last week uh, when other maybe guys with uh, slightly you know bigger names uh, were being thrown out there. And you get the sense that he won the interview. He won. Yeah. He won. Uh, President Folt over, they they seem bonded in terms of how they uh, you know how they feel about a lot of things, and, uh, and that was that was fun to watch how how the interplay between those two. Yeah, I asked Carol Folt how many uh, candidates there were in the process, and she didn't want to disclose that, but she said there were a handful. But it did seem like they really bonded in that interview process. Uh, the interesting thing that you noted, they both talked about uh, Bones failures, the, the things that he had messed up prior to the, taking this job. But uh, Carol Fultz said, I'm a scientist. I, if anything, if he didn't have failures, that would be a red flag for me just because you have, if you're not failing, you're not doing anything, you're not trying. So that was an interesting little tidbit that they seemed to bond over. Yeah, I, think, I think the things she liked was, uh, as a scientist, you learn from your mistakes yeah. or you learn from the things that fail. You try this, it doesn't work. You try that, it doesn't work. What she said was what I like because they, they noted about, you know, Colorado, there were some missteps when Colorado was coming into the Pac-12, did some things right, did some things not so well, was that he bounced back, went to Cincinnati and has really gotten uh, you know, extremely good reviews for what's happening at Cincinnati and, you know, across the board uh, and an athletic program that just keeps getting bigger and, and, and stronger and doing a lot of good things. So, uh, but both Mike mentioned it and she mentioned it. I thought that was I thought it was significant. I think they, they're on the same wavelength about I'm capable of learning uh, from my mistakes. When you think about it, there have been a lot of people here that we've had to deal with at, US, at USC who've not admitted True. any mistakes. True. Or if you don't want to admit your mistakes, you really can't learn from them. Yeah. So this is a different process with, with uh, Mike Bone. He's different. Mm -hmm. And clearly he was asked many questions about the, the fate of USC's football program, what he expects out of that. Now, across the board, he said that he's expecting national championships from all of USC's athletic programs. Carol Folt said the same thing as well. Uh, but he said it's too mature to really weigh in on uh, the football program, and especially because there's three games left. He said he did watch the Oregon game. He won't be in town uh, in Arizona for the, the Arizona game just because he'll be back in Cincinnati cleaning th uh, wrapping things up there. The one thing that did stand out in the football talk was that he said that he expects the team to finish strong he said he didn't want to put any more pressure on the coaches or the players given what they're they're going through this season but he he did say he expects them to finish strong and the one thing he kept saying was it's not just fight on it's fight on to victory and that wins are important so that was the key uh, some key phrases from bone there yeah I, I do think the uh, the finishing strong is is really key because it was a you know it was what happened last year that yeah. didn't happen and uh it's in the balance for sure after after the Oregon game. So uh, uh, I think that gives you some indication of when you're the athletic director coming in with just three weeks left in the season, uh, 
how do you do some evaluations? That's one way you can do it, I think. So uh, that that was a smart answer. Uh, he, I also thought he did mention the fact that uh, he has uh, has not met Clay Helton yeah. yet. So yeah. uh, we'll see. Uh, they made it very obvious that they're going to the um, women's volleyball game tonight and with Dr. Folt and uh, and Mike Bohm. And they basically said, come up and say hi. I mean, they, you know, asked people to come out and uh, come by and talk to him. I think that's one of the big things about him that came through from his Cincinnati years is he's really a presence at games with fans. Yeah. He's, he really likes talking to people, and he's good at it. He's one of these guys that will, you know, when he finds out that, say, I'm from Cincinnati, yeah. went to, he'll ask you, did you grow up there? Because I talked about how much I like what they did with Nippert Stadium. He said, oh, you, you grew up there. Where did you go to high school? Immediately. That's a smart question. Yeah. And I said, Cincinnati St. Xavier. Oh, man, I know in the Catholic League, and that's such a great. He said, you know, now that I also said I am the uh, was the SID of Xavier. And he said, ooh. He said, those are good folks. I like those, <laughs> those people at Xavier. But then he kind of told everybody, he said, I will remember him. Because he gave me, he told me, I'm going to try to learn all your names and what have you. But he said, it really helps me when you kind of tell me something that I can remember and I can grab onto. He said, and knowing the things you told me about um, about Cincinnati uh, really helps me just to always know then who you are. So. Yeah, we talked about bonding. You kind of bonded with him on that Cincinnati <laughs> connection. He even bonded over your hat. What do you say about that? Yeah, he loved my hat. I mean, and, and the sh- surprising thing is, I've gotten more compliments about this hat because of that rose on there than anything I've ever done. Maybe I, I, I'm checking out of, you know, C- CVS or whatever, and they'll say, I really like your hat. So that was like a normal reaction. But then he puts his hand up. He says, can I touch the rose? He says, that's why I'm here. Well, how smart is that as an answer? Can I touch your rose? <laughs> yeah, I think that was the thing that stood out the most is that the press relations, he knew how to work it. He, oh, as a, From a PR standpoint, this was a very good thing for USC and for him. Yes, I'm thinking uh, he's just, he's really good at, um, as I watch the athletic department people walk across, I'm <laughs> guessing they had a, I'm just guessing, we weren't told that, but I'm guessing they had a meeting uh, It with seems like the whole somebody, athletic department yeah, is walking right past us right now. now. So, uh, uh, I, you know, they were there, and it was a you know big crowd. And uh, uh, how this is all going to play out, I don't think any of us know. I don't think they know. Mm-hmm. But uh, he, he, I mean, you can't almost do any better than he did yeah. today. I mean, I'm, he just did did great. Yeah. Now, the noteworthy thing that Carol Fultz said that has people all a frenzy on Twitter is that she was asked, uh, did you put any limitations on uh, Mike Bone's ability to hire coaches? And basically, are you? what's the leadership process with that? And she says, as a leader, I trust that the people I hire to be leaders can do what they do, and then we'll consult on things. But she said no uh, when asked if she put any limitations on uh, his ability to hire coaches. So people think about the coaching staff, the future of the coaches, and they're pretty excited about that answer. But what do you take away from that? Yeah, I know uh, they were kidding about uh, playing a little drinking game or every time uh, she said integrity. Somebody's who is uh, they? <laughs> some of the people who were watching. <laughs> OK, uh, just and there's no question. She said integrity yeah. a lot, a lot. He said integrity. But uh, I think in some ways that kind of uh, immunizes you against however you want to go in terms of the hirings uh that that you trust his integrity that integrity is a big deal for you and if you hire somebody that means you're going to trust their integrity and so i think in some ways it gave her the ability to kind of turn it over him she doesn't i mean let's face it all the all the talk has been she's really involved in uh in terms of who's not available who you can't hire she said that's not the case and I think it looks like it's open for who he decides to hire can be hired. And now you can fill in the blank, but uh, that's what it looks like. Well, to reiterate, USC does not have an uh, open position at the head coaching uh, for football yet. Or uh, We'll see. It's TBD. And that's the, my last point is now that there's athletic director 
in place for USC. These next three weeks are going to get really interesting around this football program. Yeah, I mean, he said you know, he's going to be in Cincinnati saying goodbye on Saturday. Sunday he gets back on a plane, and Monday he's going to be in his office. So that's a you know, pretty quick turnaround, uh, you know, for him and for USC. And how that all uh, how that all plays out. I mean, everything is compressed in terms of you know USC and uh, you know three weeks he's going to play UCLA. And then the day after is the football banquet. And you know, so there is a really compressed time frame here. Yeah. How, that, how that, you know, works out, he knows all the, the rules in terms of recruiting and all that. And he knows when the, you know, the early signing date is and everybody knows everything. So uh, at this point, um, I think it could be kind of a whirlwind next, uh, you know, few weeks. Yep. So buckle up in that sense. But any final thoughts, Dan, before we wrap it up here? No, I thought it, it went... I think there were probably some trepidations at USC about how this is all going to go and how it kind of got leaked out and what happened to the other people and all that. I think that all kind of went by the wayside with the way this went today. I mean, I think everybody, you know, and you made the point, um, just winning the press conference doesn't always get the job done. Yeah. I mean, and we know that we've seen that, we've seen that before. Yes, we have. So, but uh, I don't think you could have a much better start. Uh, not. You couldn't have it with me for sure, because <laughs> <laughs> both uh, both Mike Bone and Carol Folt wanted to to talk about what they'd done, and we're not used to we're not used to that kind of thing where everybody's involved. Now I, I'll be honest, Knox Zacchaeus did like to talk to us, but uh, yeah. but it wasn't always shared with everybody, yeah. and, and and they seemed to be on the same wavelength and wanted to say. Uh, you know, it didn't look like it was rehearsed, but it looked like they were thinking the same same thoughts about how they got here and where they want to go. So, uh, uh, you know, good luck. Yep. We shall see. Alrighty, that's going to wrap it up here from USC. For Dan Weber, I'm Keely Orr. For more, check out uscfootball.com.